What's up YouTube? How are you doing? Chana Deer Techno Dad here and in today's video I'll be testing the OEM HDMI cables. That means it's the cables that came with the Series S, the Series X, and the PlayStation 5. Make sure you guys have the right cable and it's working properly. I know there's been a lot of confusion out there, especially with the PlayStation 5 cable, so you've come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe up and hit that bell so you know when the next video is released because I got a lot of cool uh, gaming content coming out. And of course, more TVs are on the way. Now, before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to two groups of people. One is definitely my patrons on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. You guys have no idea how much your contribution helps the channel, you know, do these silly things like buy a bunch of HDMI cables and test them. Like that, there's still money involved in all of that. And I am saving up to get some of those new audio quest 48 gigabits per second cables in. However, I feel like they're just going to work it's audio quest. I mean, right. They should just work. So I'm um, waiting on some more money for that, but thank you guys so much. You guys uh, like really do help out. And of course the other are the people that decided to, for whatever reason, help me out and help me get a console. So Brandon, he helped me uh, get the Xbox series X. I was able to pre-order a series S for my teenager. So it's in his room, but Brandon, thank you so much for selling me yours at retail. And if you guys didn't know, I made a rant video about these filthy scalpers on eBay. And what ended up happening was I got three emails of people wanting to know if I wanted to buy their console that they had just gotten a second, you know, they got a backup pre-order because they heard people were, you know, um, canceling pre-orders like Amazon and stuff like that. So I had a couple of others and that's how I was able to get both consoles. So I got all three consoles in house so I can test and that's what we're going to get into. All right, guys. So we are talking about HDMI cables and there was confusion as some YouTuber did an unboxing of a PlayStation 5 and noticed that the cable said high speed HDMI cable. Now high speed HDMI cable is good for 4K 60 and 18 gigabits per second is what we're talking about transfer speed or transfer rate, whatever you want to call it. And the ultra high speed HDMI cables should be able to pass 48 gigabits per second, which is the HDMI 2.1 spec. And the way I'm going to test is by using the Marantz SR7015. All the 2020, I think $1,500 and up AV receivers from Denon and Marantz come with an HDMI diagnostic section in which you can actually test the HDMI cables. Now, of course, some of you are going to have an issue with this because the HDMIs are capped at 40 gigabits per second. So we won't be able to test the full 48 gigabits per second. And we are not going to be you getting into that debate. I've made a couple of videos on the 40 gigabit per second versus the 48 gigabit per second. So you can check out those videos if you want to and comment up a storm if you like, but we don't need to talk about that here. This is what we have right now. And this is what we're going to test. So let's get into it. So if you want to know how to actually connect these things up and where to go in the menu and what button presses you need to do, uh, I made a video about that in my previous test where I tested 8K cables in 10 feet and 16 feet lengths. And of course, if you guys want to check out those cables, I put a link down in the description so you guys can look at that. The Zest Kit 8K HDMI seems to be the popular one. It passes everything at 16 feet, so it'll pass a five foot and it will pass a three foot as well. So the longer the cable, if the long cable passes, the smaller ones will definitely pass. Okay, so here we have the three cables and I just put the corresponding controller behind the cable so you guys kind of know. And so I could know exactly which cable belonged to which console. Now for the cable that came with the Xbox Series S, I can see it says high speed HDMI on the cable, which actually looks just like the cable that came with uh, my Xbox One S's and Xbox One X's. So I'm pretty sure they're just reusing this cable and chances are it'll probably work no problem. Now for the Xbox Series X, it has like the same kind of casing, but on the plastic, it does say ultra high speed HDMI on there. So cool. We're going to check that out for sure. And as for the PlayStation 5, like I said before, there was confusion about it, but I'm here to clear that all up. The cable says high speed HDMI cable, not ultra high speed HDMI cable. So 
definitely a good thing you guys stop by here to check out the video. Now, one of the things I know from my previous test is that if the cable is short enough, and if the cable manufacturer actually made a decent quality cable, chances are it'll send that 40 gigabits per second. And when we get into the spreadsheet, you'll see, like I have some three foot, like $12 cables that are supposed to be 4K UHD, but they pass a 40 gigabit signal. So it's just one of those things. Like if the cable's good enough and short enough, it'll probably pass it. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet. Now I just added the OEM cables at the bottom here. So everything is in one place. And as you can see along the top, we have three different results. We have a pass 8K, 40 gigabits per second. The middle, we have 4K, 18 gigabits per second pass, and then 8K, 24 gigabits per second fail. And then we have a full fail where literally it just says cable test fail, and that's that. I also tested eARC, VRR, and ALLM. Now for VRR and ALLM, I use the Xbox One X because for some reason that stuff is not showing up on the PlayStation 5 going through the Marantz AVR. Not sure why that is, like just the little thing in the upper right hand corner that says ALLM and VRR, it's just not there. So I don't know what's up with that, but I was able to verify VRR and ALLM is being passed through these cables with the Xbox One X. And as far as eARC is concerned, I connected up my Oppo 203 to the TV and then connected these cables to the SR7015 and I was able to get eARC. I wasn't able to get Dolby Atmos because I don't know, I think something's still wrong with my LG, but I was able to send IMAX Enhanced via DTS-X through the TV and to the AVR. So all the three cables passed eARC, LLM, and VRR. So that's a good sign there. All right, since that part's out of the way, now let's take a look at the Xbox Series S and how it fared on the tests. As you can see out of 10 tests, eight out of them passed 40 gigabits per second, and two of them passed the 18 gigabits per second, but did not pass the 24 gigabits per second. So what does this say? So 20% of the time, it won't pass an 8K signal. Well, it's the Series S, so all it really needs to do is pass 4K 60 at the very maximum, which this test shows that it has done that 10 out of 10 times, right? So it hasn't done 8K or 40 gigabits per second 10 out of 10 times. It did it eight out of 10 times, which is still really good. So I would say if you have a Series S and you need to use a aftermarket cable, go with the Zest Kit if you need something like 10 foot or 15 foot or something like that. However, the cable that comes with the Series S will work perfectly for the Series S. Moving on to the Xbox Series X, we can see here that it passed 40 gigabits per second 10 times. It did not fail at all in those 10 times. So I'm pretty much going to assume that it's good to go. Now, again, this is a six foot cable. And if you need something longer, I would recommend the Pacroban 8K cable at 10 feet or the Zest Kit, which I think you can get in a 16 foot, a 10 foot, a five foot and a three foot, something like that, or, or a six and a half foot. Just if you want to check it out, link is in the description. And moving on to what you guys want to probably know about, how did the cable from the PS5 do in the test? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it passed seven times out of 10. 40 gigabits per second, so that's good. However, it did fail. And we're not talking about just this like half fail where it failed 24 gigabits per second, but passed 18 gigabits per second. It fully failed three out of 10 times. So 30% of the time it failed. And I know 30% doesn't sound huge to you, but uh, that's pretty big for me. So my recommendation, if you have a PS5, get the Zest Kit 8K cable at six and a half feet or whatever it is. And if you need something longer, definitely get the 15 or 16 foot cable from Zest Kit. Those are the ones that are going to be there for you and work just 100% of the time. All it needs to do is work. And they're not that expensive. I think $20, $25, maybe, depending on the length, of course. So I guess the big question is, did Sony know that the cable is not ultra high speed cable because they know that the console actually is not putting out a native 4K 120. And I know I've had this conversation on the channel before and you know, I've gotten a lot of hate for it. And yeah, you know, these consoles are doing some sort of checkerboard rendering, whatever the case is, 
getting 4K 120, especially with these like first first games, I know the signal, it'll if the TV will see a 4K 120 signal, the AVR will see a 4K 120 signal. But are you is the game natively in 4K 120? I highly doubt it. Anyway, here we are. HDMI cables are tested and you guys can do with the information, whatever it is you like. I would highly recommend getting the Zest Kit 8K HDMI cables for whatever use you wanted. Again, I've only tested up to the 16 foot length. So if you need a 25 foot or 50 foot, that's where, you know, things can get a little dicey. So I'm going to have to try and save up some money to get those in because they are pretty expensive. And then we'll do some tests and I'll add to this list. As you can see here, this uh, Mo Shao 8K 15 foot cable passed seven times, but failed nine times. So like, you know, I would definitely pass on a cable like that. Definitely. The Avanki 4K cable was 15 feet and it passed seven times, but failed four times. So even though that is a 4K cable, you can see that the longer the cable runs, the more problems we have. I mean, if you see my little Snow Kids 4K flat three foot cable, it passed 8K and it's just a 4K cable. Oh, sorry, it passed 40 gigabits per second and it's only a 4K cable. So it's only rated for 18 gigabits per second. Uh, same thing with the old school Securo Max that I recommended two, three years ago. That six foot cable also passed 40 gigabits per second four times. So basically if they make a good cable and if it's short enough, it could possibly pass 40 gigabits per second. So here you go. There's the information. I hope you enjoyed. So uh, if you have questions about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Go ahead, smash that like button if you liked it. And definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad. I'll see you next time.